what's up guys i'll be live on my twitch channel as this video going up so if you want to stop by links in the description below love to chat with y'all but anyways back to the content at hand unless you're one of the two extremes of players in warzone playing either super aggressive and getting into many cqb situations and gunfights or oppositely playing exclusively at a distance maybe picking off your enemies with a sniper rifle from my experience i would say the rifle category is by and far the most versatile and best approach you can take when you play warzone you can win your gunfights up close sure and you can even challenge some gunfights at a distance but when it comes to the mid-range engagements with all the amount of open fields long streets and building clusters with various amounts of cover the rifle's mid-range effectiveness to me is extended because it's the sweet spot but because it's such an open world that extends that useful range just a tad bit more so this makes rifles in my mind the biggest necessity when it comes to the majority of the game I'm not necessarily saying every aspect of the game but the rifle category is phenomenal so today i want to kind of take a look at the rifle category as a whole and bring you my top 10 loadouts for the rifles of warzone presenting my favorite and preferred best builds for each weapon so that if you have a specific taste in weapon you can outfit it to do well on the battlefield as we go along let me know your thoughts down below what's your favorite rifle build perhaps either out of this video discussed or maybe something that we didn't discuss in this video if you'd like to also see more weapon classification builds like this we can certainly do more for the smgs lmgs snipers and so on so if you are also new to the channel and interested in staying up to date with all things modern warfare and warzone on a daily basis like these class setups like information and updates and anything in between do be sure to hit that subscribe button but anyways let's talk about the weapons let's talk firstly about the weapon builds and then get to crafting the overall loadout as a whole because the big stuff that is the variables here mostly come down to the weapon builds themselves the things like your perks lethals and tacticals those don't vary as much as opposed to what attachments you'll run on the weapons because as you see when we get there i primarily run one of two different ways depending on how the gameplay is looking to shape up so i'm going to take this firstly in a sort of top 10 approach here we'll talk about what i think are the best rifles first and then I'll work our way down to the not so great ones but you can still use them let's start with the m4 because it seems like that one and the growl are in this sort of perpetual war of which is the best rifle in terms of overall use and the meta for the m4a1 i run the monolithic suppressor the corvus custom marksman or the m16 grenadier barrel those are kind of interchangeable the no stock attachment the stippled grip tape and the 60 round magazine for the build of this i try to make it something that is a faster build that can get into the action faster hence the no stock and the extra movement you end up getting with that plus the ads speed but also still having that damage and range of the corvus custom marksman or the m16 grenadier plus also then the monolithic suppressor the stippled grip tape helps with getting that weapon up but also we lose some of that mobility because of the 60 round mag as opposed to the 50 but overall it's a great build here that i think you should definitely try out for the growl we kind of kit it for the same exact reasons range plus also getting the weapon up as fast as possible for this we run the monolithic suppressor the ffs 20.8 inch nexus barrel or the archangel will suffice as well again kind of that coke to pepsi preference in terms of the slight alterations between the positives and the negatives of the barrel the no stock attachment again for that extra mobility the xrk void 2 and the 50 round magazine i've been running as of lately as opposed to the 60 round mag just in gaining a little bit more of that movement speed back both of those two weapon builds i would absolutely recommend to anyone out there and those are definitely two of the best weapons in the entire game let alone the rifle category so you'd be great with those builds in basically any situation the m13 is one that we try to play for a little bit at a distance because the weapon excels at a distance but also in that headshot multiplier at a distance effectively if you can hit your headshots you basically cut the time to kill down in just about half which is incredible so for the m13 we end up kidding this out for a more so accurate at a distance build but we have the monolithic suppressor the tempest marksman barrel a gi mini reflex mainly because i just don't like the m13 iron sights plus also we want to be precise so it will allow us to snap to an enemy's head and know where we're shooting here at that the stippled grip tape and then the 60 round magazine as well now this build is one that we don't run any grip on the barrel to compensate for recoil stabilization because we kind of gain that in the monolithic suppressor and the tempest marksman barrel the natural weight of those two offer up some counteracting properties to an already relatively easy to control recoil pattern so if you can either consciously or subconsciously slightly pull down on your aiming thumbstick or with your mouse in a gunfight you'll be able to control it and absolutely laser players at a distance and that's really what you want to do so those five attachments i would absolutely recommend on that then we kind of get to the same sort of thing where the ram is right up there i think with the ground the m4 
but I don't use it as much and it's not one that has kind of captured me in the same way, though it is still a very viable option. For this, we end up running the Monolithic Suppressor, the Forge Tack Eclipse Barrel for some extra range, some Optic of some kind. I've had the Cronin LP945 Mini Reflex since the very beginning. Haven't really bothered to take it off and swap it out. I'm just not a huge fan of the Ram Iron Sights, so I have one on that one. The Stippled Grip Tape again for some ADS speed, and then the 50 round magazine. Just like the M13, we don't really pay too much attention to a grip or a stock, but we can make it work with that build for an accurate build, and we'll naturally have those properties that we want to combat because of the attachments we chose. So definitely an awesome choice here if you're looking for a rifle that may be still on meta, but may not be as on meta as the M4 on the ground. So great choice here with that one as well. Now we're going to get into ones that you may find every so often, but it might not be something you find in too many engagements. I want to firstly talk about the Kilo, because the Kilo is a weapon that is really good in the right hands, but is something that breaks us into those off-meta weapons where some things may be a red flag for you that you don't maybe want to use it, but still can be used without a doubt. For this, I normally run the Monolithic Suppressor, the Syngard Arms 19.8-inch Prowler Barrel, the Ranger Foregrip, or the Commando. The Commando offers less of a penalty to mobility, but also when we get to weapons like the Kilo, and then we'll talk about the Odin in a second here, I like to have that Ranger Foregrip for the extra recoil control. Then we run the 50-round magazines for a little bit more mobility, but also still having enough as opposed to the traditional 30-round base magazine and also the stippled grip tape. That's a fantastic build that I'd played around with quite a bit and really enjoyed when I did, but again, it's not really on meta, so I kind of went back to other builds. Then we'll talk about the Odin, another one that previously was actually in my top 10 for a very long time and actually made some waves at the very beginning of Warzone, but it's kind of since creeped down that list and kind of fallen down a little bit, but still is a viable weapon, but one you just may not see all that much as opposed to maybe say around launch. For this, I run the Colossus Suppressor, the Odin Factory 730 millimeter barrel. And I think this is an important component to this build. It'll play for that recoil stabilization, but it also won't sacrifice too much in mobility, which you'd end up losing out more on with the 810 millimeter barrel. After that, I'll run the Ranger Foregrip for again, additional recoil control because you're already getting a beefy bit of natural recoil with the heavier builds of attachments in the Colossus Suppressor in the barrel, but this stabilizes it just a little bit more. And then also I'll run the 25 round magazine. And as we'll come to discuss with the SCAR, ammo is absolutely huge in Warzone, but a 30 round mag in this case is a little bit too much in sacrifice for that mobility. So I tend to stay away from the full 30 round magazine capacity and instead take five less shots for a little bit more in that mobility category, since we're sacrificing already so much with the other attachments. Now, one thing to note is that if you do have the Black Asp variant, you can end up building this actually without the need for a reticle, since the iron sights are much more pinpoint precise. They don't have the intrusive iron ring around them. If you do have that blueprint, it can come in handy in getting a grip or perhaps a stock involved for extra ADS speed since you're really front loading on the build and will lose out that extra speed to get your gun up. So that's up to you, but also then moves us over into the next weapon of the FAL, which this one I run the Monolithic Suppressor, the XRK Marksman, the GI Mini Reflex, the Forge Tack Stalker. For this, we're running with the aiming stability rather than necessarily just the ADS speeds on the build. So the stock will differ a little bit than some of the other normal stuff you'll see here at this. And then also again, that 24 round magazine because we want that extended capacity, but also don't want to sacrifice too much in mobility. For the AK-47, I kit this one out with the Monolithic Suppressor, the Spetsnaz Elite Barrel, a sight of some kind, whether that be the GI Mini Reflex or something else you may prefer, I'd definitely recommend that. I'm just not a huge fan of the iron sights for the AK-47, especially at a distance. I run the Skeleton Stock for a little bit more of that mobility, and then also the 545 30 round magazine because this actually got a buff as of recently and made it a lot better in terms of playing a more mobile approach for not only medium range, but also much more in close quarters engagements. So it's fantastic to get the job done if you need to also go CQB, but one that I would definitely recommend for that build. The SCAR is the second to last weapon we'll talk about here in terms of weapon builds. For this, it's not really an ideal weapon, but we may be revisiting it here on the channel in a little bit because it can prove to be something that is a little bit surprising in the right hands. This I run the Monolithic Suppressor, the Forge Tack 20 inch barrel, the GI Mini Reflex, the XRK Obelisk Pro, again, as with the FAL, we're playing a little bit more for that aiming stability rather than mobility and ADS speeds. And then also the 30 round mag, because like we talked about, 
Here's the thing, it's not really hugely advantageous to challenge gunfights with only 20 rounds in a base magazine. So 30 rounds is of course the base standard for the meta ARs of the Growl of the M4A1. You'll wanna at least be able to match that. So if you can hit your shots and make them count, you'll end up being able to use this very well. But that also means that we do wanna rely a little bit more on that aiming stability, hence why we kitted it out for such. Then closing it out with the FR556, we're building this one for accuracy right out of the gate. This one coming with the monolithic suppressor, the FR 24.4 inch sniper barrel, the Solo Zero or GI Mini Reflex, just because again, not a huge fan of the iron sights of the FR 5.56, the stippled grip tape, and then the 50 round magazine to close it out. So those are your large variables here and really comes down to whatever weapon you want to use. I would recommend the class setup we talked about for each of that. But when we come to these things like your perks or lethals and your tacticals, that's where it really becomes more so constant and sticks more so to my play style where I try to encompass at least doing a little bit of everything. I think I can challenge a lot of close quarters gunfights with rifles, though it may not be necessarily the weapon's forte. I feel like I can get the job done. So I'll normally run a sniper on the back, which requires us to use overkill. And then in that case, we end up also running cold blooded and oftentimes tracker because if I am somewhat close to a player, I can see where they're going if I shoot them and they try and dip into cover, or I'll end up running something like amped where I can swap weapons faster. And again, having that sniper on my back, that can sometimes be advantageous to be able to get that up or vice versa a little bit faster. Then I primarily always run C4 and a heartbeat sensor here for this, just so I can try and get that information with my tactical. And of course, C4 as a lethal is, I think the most powerful of all lethals you can use here in Warzone. So I run those two. The only other thing that will really differ is that if I do want to play just say something like an aggressive play style where I'm running a rifle but then I won't run a sniper secondary I'll run say the Renetti's akimbo I'll end up using ghost in place of that overkill but everything else is still primarily the same so with that that's ultimately the class setups here that I run on basically every single rifle category that you want to fill out Again, the big thing coming down to how you really build out the weapon so that it plays to the proficiencies of each individual weapon rather than kidding it out around that. So that's the big stuff here that I think is of importance. So hopefully this helped you out in some way, shape or form. Let me know your thoughts down below. What's your favorite rifle to use? And of course, if you want to try out some of these, let me know how you do down there in the comment section and down below. But that's where we're going to wrap it up. So hopefully you enjoyed the video. Hopefully you found it insightful in some way, shape or form. And if you did, make sure you drop a like down below. If you are new to the channel, make sure you get subscribed so you don't miss a single thing regarding all things Modern Warfare and Warzone content, updates, news, information, tips, tricks, class setups, and loadouts like this. Of course, we'll keep you up to date with all of that here on the channel on a regular and daily basis. If you're interested, hit that subscribe button. But if you want to follow me over on Twitter and Instagram, those are the best places to get connected with me outside of YouTube. Practice on both those. If you guys want to strike up a conversation, ask me a question, whatever it may be, that link is down there in the description below. That said, thanks so much for watching. My name is Espresso. I'll see you guys later. Take care and peace.